I'm back with a special Easter treat for you all. Today we have a look at this Sonos BR100 zone bridge thing. Uh, this is an obsolete bit of hardware that in the past was used to connect or to create a Sonos wireless network and connect it to your home router. This was made obsolete a while ago given that all Sonos products nowadays have wireless built into them so uh, this functionality uh, in this box was no longer needed. So my plan today is just to take this apart, have a look at the chips on the board, work out what they are, what they do, and just gain a better uh, understanding of how this thing worked internally. So I don't know how this thing comes apart. I am prepping my screwdrivers. Now, because this is obsolete, it doesn't matter if I destroy it completely. I have been given, given it to be torn down and destroyed. So um, yeah, let's give it a go. Ah, secrets revealed. There we go. Good. Mm, warranty void if opened. I think that ship may have sailed a long time ago. Okay, let's get these undone. They are tight screws. Let us find something else to undo those. That will give me a little bit more leverage. Leverage? Leverage. Let's see if I can get that in there. Ah, that's better. I think my plan is to, once I've taken this apart, take a few nice high resolution photos look at the chips one by one and uh, see what they all do. Not sure how old this is. Can't see a date on it other than it says copyright 2004-2009. So it's probably what nine or 10 years old, something like that. There we go. All right, so I think I'm gonna take, take this out of here. Well, it's a bit glary, isn't it? There we go. So I'm gonna take this off here because there might be stuff underneath it. Can't see that very well, but I'm gonna take that off and then, yeah, see what's on the other side. Let's first of all take this out of there. Interesting, like these little weird standoff things. Wow, okay. Not much in it though. Really, I guess it's all, all under here, isn't it? So, um, yeah, let's get those shields removed. And first out of the gate, we have the IP175C, and that's a five port 10100 ethernet controller although in this implementation only two of the ports are being used. And this is actually the brains of the operation where all the grunt work is done. I couldn't really find very much information on this chip on the web. Uh, this is a system on chip which is an integrated circuit that integrates all or most of the components of a computer. These usually include a central processing unit, memory interfaces, input output devices, and secondary storage interfaces alongside other components such as radio modems but this is all on a single uh, substrate or microchip. At its heart this is a Linux computer that runs the software that drives the Sonos bridge. And next up we have the 25P64V6P and this is from ST Microelectronics. This is a 64 megabit SPI flash memory. This is what stores the router's program code. And towards the bottom of the board, next to the Ethernet jacks, 
we have the obligatory Ethernet transformers. These are required as they're part of the Ethernet standard. They used to do two things. The first one is to isolate the onboard Ethernet hardware from the external network so that the signals travel across the transformer but aren't directly electrically connected to the Ethernet chip. The second purpose is to provide signal conditioning for the Ethernet interface. Ethernet uses twisted pair differential signalling and this is used to help with cancelling out interference that may be present across the Ethernet cable, especially over longer runs or runs where the cable has been placed close to noisy power devices. Underneath the system on chip we have its 40 MHz crystal clock. And the last of the major circuitry on the top of the board is this 3.3 volt switching power supply. This converts the 5 volts from the power adapter into 3.3 volts for running the SOC. The chip that drives that circuitry is actually on the underside of the board, so we'll be looking at that shortly. And of particular interest are these two devices on the motherboard. Now, I initially thought that these were mechanical standoffs for the circuit board itself, but actually they're 2.4 GHz antennas for the wireless subsystem. And you can see that the one on the right is connected to the same track as the antenna connector. Although that connector is not connected to anything at the moment, uh, these connectors are often used for testing internally before the board leaves the factory. And moving to the underside of the board, we have the MP1410 chip, and this is a step-down switch mode converter. This can supply up to 2 amps of output current and operates at a fixed 420 kHz frequency. And this is the chip that's responsible for stepping down the 5 volts into the 3.3 that the SOC needs. And something else uh, that needs that 3.3 volts generated by the DC switcher is our final major component on the board. And this is uh, the DRAM, the, the RAM for the actual computer itself. And this is a 1 meg by 16 bit by 4 banks synchronous DRAM. And that's another teardown video done. I really appreciate you sticking to the end of this video. I know I don't make them often enough, but I already have another one in the works that will definitely be out in less than six months. I'm currently at 990 subscribers and looking to hit 1,000 this month. So thank you, all of you that have subscribed. I really appreciate it. And yes, I know my main camera is crap. It's being replaced tomorrow, so my next video should look a lot better. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.